Florida, it's the Sunshine State, full of adventurous activity surrounded by beaches, people, and nature. See the little bird that just flew in? Yeah, go ahead and look at those. No, those are, they're shorebirds. Those guys all nest on the Arctic Circle. And they're, uh, some of them are gonna spend the winter here and some. But did you know that many of us live and vacation on what was once the original Everglades? An ecosystem far more vast than what we see today and a vacation destination not only meant for humans. And so it's important for them to find places like this when they land that has plenty of food in it because they've got to really tank up. And so this, I mean, we're, we're not important just for us. We're important for two hemispheres of migratory birds that are coming and going. And, you know, in Florida, we're the last jump off before the Gulf of Mexico. So. Starting just south of Orlando, urban and farmland once served as a crucial water filter before it traditionally permeated southwards towards the Florida Bay. Historically, this would all be flooded for like three months. At the end, of, right now, it would still it would still be flooded in a in a pristine system because of the summer rains would have still been sitting here. They would have still been trying to get out of here, but they can't get out of here because they didn't have drainage ditches. And once we build drainage ditches, it's like building a freeway. Meet Dr. Paul Gray. He's a scientist from the National Audubon Society. And just like the indigenous people, Gray has seen this land dry up while the water has become more polluted. And so now when it rains, all the water just goes straight to Lake Okeechobee. So it's drier, it's more polluted, and um, people downstream get, get the results of that. People of South Florida are all getting hit with harmful algal blooms, and the source is nutrient-rich water. Okeechobee, historically, we think the phosphorus levels were about 20 to 40 parts per billion, and nowadays they're 100 to 200. Last year we had a thousand tons of phosphorus go into the lake. The goal is 105. We had a thousand. And it's the second worst year on record. We just haven't done a good enough job. And we know how to do it. We know how to build filter marshes and we know how to, to contain nutrients. We know how to build reservoirs and recycle water on properties. We just haven't paid to do it. Mm -hmm. Where's the disconnect? Um, people just don't realize how bad the problem is. and. Um, the politicians haven't funded the solutions. We've put so much phosphorus in, in the watershed. It's already on the land, it's already on the farms, it's already on the citrus groves and the dairies, that if we stopped everything today, we'd probably have 500 tons going into the lake for another um, 20 to 50 years. And the goal is 100. So your entire career will be 500 ton years. And unless we start reconfiguring this watershed to hold that water on the properties and hold the nutrients on the properties, we're gonna have blue-green algae, we're going to have red tide being fed by all these outflows from the coast, and, and we're going to have a, a miserable Florida. It's going to be one that no one wants to really see, but, but we got to get more serious about it. But this freeway of polluted water can be slowed down and cleaned, according to Dr. Gray, if we go back to the drawing board and find better solutions in water management practices. If we're going to spend money to build big water storage features, why can't we just pay these guys and say, will you plug your ditch? And then when the rainfall hits this, this will just stay wet. Instead, when the water does fall from the rain, it drains out of the veins of Florida so fast, we're left bone dry. Oddly enough, I mean, we get flooded in the summer, but we're out of water in Florida. And the future water is, uh, future of Florida is water shortages. So that's another reason, you know, we want to save this water, not only for the birds, but for the farmers and for the cities. It's, that's our future. You said we're out of water. Um, yeah, we're already having shortages. We're already having restrictions. And like, you know, down the lower west coast, they, they tell you you can only water your lawn two out of two days a week or things like that. We don't have enough water. And in Florida, <laughs> I mean. Lucky for us though, we have a body of water that's our blue gold, Lake Okeechobee. That'll be our saving grace, right? 2010. In 2011, the state took a, uh, a very dramatic step backwards. Uh, they actually began relaxing their uh, enforcement of polluters. In 2011, Governor Rick Scott slashed funding to five regional water management districts by $700 million. Meanwhile, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection rolled back pollution enforcement cases and 
no longer tests water quality in South Florida on an American scientific threshold, but relies solely on the smell and appearance of the water known as narrative criteria to detect pollution. Environmental engineer and scientist Dr. Gary Goforth says this past summer, 90% of the open water surface on this lake was covered in blue-green algae. And we, we have uh, pets dying in St. Lucie estuary. Fort Myers, I lost track of how many thousands of tons of dead fish y'all had to clean up, how many endangered species are dying right and left, and yet the federal government is just you know, refusing to take in and take the steps necessary. I think that reflects a lack of political courage. So if more than 50% of Florida wants clean water, wants clean living conditions, and the science says you need to do this, that, and the other, remove the nitrogen, remove the phosphates, remove this and that, and have better practices when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to sustainability here in Florida. Right. Living here means maybe no fertilizer on your grass. Living here means this, that, or the other because right. we live in a delicate that's, ecosystem that's exactly right. called Florida, the right. Everglades, especially south of Orlando. Um, why is it that the science has the solutions, the people want better out of this water, better living conditions along the east coast and the west coast, but we're here today and it just seems to be turmoil and pointing fingers at right. different entities. Why is that? Well, I, I think you hit, kind of hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, it's the politics of this situation. The data that I've seen indicate fairly clearly that, that agricultural land uses um, account for somewhere more than 75% of the pollution entering the lake. As far as I can tell, we're gonna see this toxic algae year after year after year for the foreseeable future. When you get problems like this, it's always, you know, we want to blame somebody. Well, it's us, it's people, it's all of us, and everybody contributes. And so we just have to be mindful of it's, we want them to clean up their act, but we got to clean up our action. Chris Grisby, For Truth Media.